Hello, everybody, and welcome to CapsuleCast Week 2. I'm your horse, uh, horse host, Doorguard. Uh, this week, we have special guest Toshiro. Hey, what's up, everyone? He is the coach of the Rugrats, here to uh, give us an extra point of view on their fantastic divisional match. And, as always, my co-host, Oasis. What's happened, everybody? All right, without further ado, you guys ready to jump straight into Match 1, Cinema versus Kaiju? Mm-hmm. Of course. Alrighty then. So for match one, we had Team Cinema versus Team Kaiju, a non-divisional but still a uh, good match overall. Uh, both teams coming in trying to prove a point uh, and and trying to get their league going uh, pretty much as to whatever uh, good start they can, especially Cinema being a newer team. So a very good start with Radis versus Turles. Uh, kind of funny to see Turles come back in against his old team of the Sands, now the Kaiju, and uh, kind of just ran through Raditz. Kind of mad that he took his spot. Uh, forced a lot of tags in this match. Uh, saw a lot of crazy nonsense. King Vegeta coming in and hitting a 14k ult. Uh, before kind of having to do a lot of tags himself. Overall, uh, it was it was it was seemed like a lot of back and forth, but Cinema always kind of held that little bit of a, a lead. And as we can see here, pretty much everybody on Team Cinema, the arrows here showing that they did slightly better uh, than they did last week, or even better. And everybody kind of just really popped off so much so that they didn't even have to have Zangaya come in this week. So. For a back and forth fight, it was unfortunately one that, uh, even though members on Kaiju did better than they did last week, uh, damage wise, it, it just did not end up for them. Both teams ending one and one. Honestly, this was a tough match to call. In fact, in the last cast, all three of us, Doorguard, myself included, Donut, all voted in favor of Kaiju winning this match out. But honestly, even though the Kaijus had the tag advantage, they tagged three times throughout this match. Cinema really took it to them, especially in the very opening set between Raditz and Turles. Turles ended up doing 53k, while Raditz only doing about 23. So that differential automatically from the start gives Cinema a huge lead, not to mention the fact that Turles already transformed, and then tags later on, which of course hindered the outer Vegeta, because how is he going to be able to do his rush B2s versus a Kaiju? then tags and then he underperforms versus garlic jr like this really did not turn out well it was some bad luck for kaiju at best uh but i will say that napa is napa had a victory here in my opinion this man went even with fascia initially of course he went even they did about two bars to each other for napa tagged coming king vegeta then fascia of course took out king vegeta and then Fasha almost went even with Nappa later on because Nappa ended up taking their bar for Fasha. So even though at the end of the day, Kaiju lost this match, the fact that they had somebody go even with Fasha, go close, go cl close with Garo Jr., it's still a win in my book. You still have a lot of fixing to do with, Tur oh, with Raditz, with Scouter Vegeta, who I feel it was just in a bad matchup overall. They can get those two people working back to their glory days, at least Raditz back to, you know, a melee monster. And we can have a real fight on our hands later down the line. Cinema definitely should be very proud of this win. They have been looked down upon, I would say, for the past couple of weeks. And this victory proves to the league that they are no one to be trifled with. They definitely have some power behind them, not just behind Turles, but with Fasha, Garl Jr. also working. They even need Zengai this week, so... Just to them. Yeah, Toshira, how do you uh, feel about this match? Cinema's first win after going 0-4 in the preseason. Honestly, I was very impressed. Like, for me, I would say star on Cinema was probably Garlic Jr. And how much, how good he actually set up his B2s. Um, but how many, he did what, like three or four high-speed rushes or so? but he used his key blast in order to stun them or like kind of get them in place before he did it. Um, I believe he, him and Fasha did around 60K or so. So they were definitely the top two in that one. Turles did surprise me a bit because I know Kaiju in the testing phase, they did have a little bit more um, issues, I guess, with him compared to Raditz. 
but it shows that cinema actually got him working and it was great to see him actually tag a lot more um one thing that i didn't expect to be honest with you was with kaiju with doing a lot of tags especially with king vegeta unfortunately he wasn't able to stay out as long in order to gain his health back but i feel like both of these teams did very well i was rooting for cinema personally but i feel like they did did great you know amazing match for the most part yeah i know the damage numbers don't quite reflect it on kaiju's side but they really did put in a good effort it just came down to some excellent efforts coming out of team cinema and even though uh turles did not quite get finished off as fast as they want being an eternal life character king vegeta showed that his eternal life and even though he's just a defense plus two eternal life and savior he will certainly put up a very good fight and for how long he stayed in ape form it's it was it was almost a, a, an unfortunate uh time to not quite make the fourth character come out on cinema but this was at hell uh this was not on their normal map so obviously kaiju not being able to transform very uh, not being able to transform as an entire team was a little weaker um, and most people would say bardock's kind of their main guy uh, him and napa being their probably biggest hitters so those being out were a little bit of a uh, handicap to a degree but i think they, they'll get it both of these teams are still very experimental um kaiju may have been the transform saiyans uh, but at the same time, they have a new squad and cinema being completely new is just really trying to find their footing. So it'll be very interesting uh, to see how the league goes uh, here for since they're both one and one. Uh, you guys have any other uh, big things you want to go over on this match? Uh, the one thing I will like to say is that I'm very proud of King Vegeta. He is one of the bigger surprises this season, especially in comparison to how he's performed in the past two seasons, in my opinion. The fact that he did the most damage here really shows off his improvement. 53k versus, you know, Flasha, Nappa, and Flasha, Turtleist. I like the fact he even took out Grog by himself. Honestly, is very impressive. And great job by Kaiju getting him to work. Sure, it's just defense plus two, eternal life savior. Three, three Batoras, but at the end of the day, that's that those three together connected into a lot of damage versus Cinema. And if there was a bit more don't say just luck but if there's a bit it was a bit more in favor of kaiju overall this could have been a completely different match honestly yeah um i don't have anything else to add for the most part all right well sounds like uh, we're pretty good on match one here so let's get on to match number two bujins versus hybrids the first divisional of the league and both these teams coming in at one and oh this was pretty much a match that whoever the winner was was going to hopefully or potentially take a big lead. Uh, these are two of the teams people most people are considering as in the top three to five of the entire league in terms of just overall fearsomeness. So this was a match that everybody was hyped for, and it did not disappoint. Pretty much from the get-go, Super Boo versus Ultimate Gohan, two huge melee monsters, duked it out. Uh, Super Boo taking the lead, but that lead almost immediately got demolished by an incoming team, Gohan, who just instantly took him out without even losing uh, something less than 500 points. Then, super even match, Kid Boo versus Team Gohan, two of probably the league's most fearsome spammers, basically went toe-to-toe, -to -toe coming down to a Super Kame Wave clash beam clash that kid boo just managed to win kind of boosting his stats a lot more than you'd think i know it says almost 60,000, but 22,000 was from winning the clash and they were both on one bar uh, almost immediately future gone comes in and kind of slashes him off the table now it's an even match between majub and future gohan two spammer hybrid kind of characters really going at it uh, this was another one that that was just a trading of B2s, a rush volley into the fearsome uh, spiral cannon of future Gohan coming down to the last half a bar where Maju managed to win, but instantly was taken out by a incoming uh, Kid Gohan. So now we have Evil Boo versus Kid Gohan. It's almost like nothing has happened at this point with how even it's been. And here's where the one discrepancy happens of Evil Boo just 
kind of taken it to kid, kid Gohan, and he just never really got his footing. It's really a matchup where uh, both are on tank melee builds, and it was really who hit with that those B2s to kind of bring in that little bit of damage. So all the numbers here are basically just from them hitting each other and nothing else. So even though it looks more impressive on the Bujin sides of numbers, this match was really a, a just absolute slobber fest, probably one of the best divisionals we'll see this uh, season. So, Oasis, take it away. What did you think of this just crazy match? So, by far, this was one of the best matches of the week, if not of the entire preseason and main season combined. Fusion's uh, winning is definitely not a surprise. I mean, either the other side coming out with a W here wouldn't be shocking to anyone. It's more like it's more how we came to that conclusion. Potentially, in my opinion... Well, not in my opinion, but the highlights of this match is definitely the beam struggle between King Kid Gohan, sorry, King Gohan and Kid Boo. Sure, it didn't amount to much in the very end because Kid Boo ended up being killed by future Gohan, but still, that pretty much was the biggest uh, symbol of this clash between Bujins and hybrids. We'll admit, uh, Super Boo beating Ultimate Gohan was inspected on my part i definitely would have assumed ultimate gohan would beat super boo uh, due to the fact that ultimate gohan has better twos maybe not better melee but better melee sense i would have said and evil boo scoring evil boo beating kid gohan isn't necessarily surprising at all evil boo is definitely a sleeper pick for probably one of the best in the league if not the best it's great melee sense able to dodge great b2s can do 20k in the flash it, that ending matchup was definitely in in the favor of bujins uh every single matchup from start to finish up until kid gohan versus evil boo was explosive there are b2s everywhere there was high damage melee it was rushed from start to finish although it is interesting to note that gohans did lose every single matchup though they did not when they not beat their man at all once. So Ultimate Gohan lost Super Boo, Teen Gohan lost to Kid Boo, uh, Future lost to Majib, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Every single one of them lost as a person, but of course their man who they were fighting got immediately taken out. Could that have been a reason why if they if they had been reversed, would we have seen something different? Maybe. But like you were saying, Dorgar, the numbers uh they aren't really inflated to say the least, but they are indicative of how much the how much power the Bujins have behind them. Uh, I will mention that Kid Boo's build, defense plus three, attack minus one, launches support, indignation, fighting spirit, savior, is very, very different from what we've seen on him in the past. We typically see him on Q plus one, super plus one, maybe attack plus one, but this defense plus three spam, this defensive spam build really really came into play i feel like in this match and was probably one of the reasons why they won it and why kid boo was able to keep up with team go on if that makes sense uh besides that i would definitely say that the boost that the hybrids had on their side didn't particularly do much latent energy isn't the best batora to be boosting for anyway since it doesn't provide Sure, it provides defense over time, but it isn't a stat that you really want. It was to more for the into. the combination with Eternal Life. Is I'm pretty sure why they they uh, brought that onto Ultimate Gohan to match the melee of the basically attack plus three on Super Boo. Just interject him there. No, that's I mean that makes sense, but I would say that you would rather just go all in on the melee. If you're going to win it, you're going to win it. As Super Boo's melee is already damage pierce, uh, tank piercing, anyways. So a little bit of defense from latent energy wouldn't do much, in my opinion. And it didn't do much at the end of the day with his, with his ultimate goal and only had 26k on the board versus Super Boo. Yeah, we saw a lot of different uses of boosts this week, uh, partially due to the, the mini divisionals, the defensive side from hybrids, uh, a lot of key bluffs by Budokai, and... Uh, Android using some some stuff to kind of make their pataras crazier. So uh, Toshiro coming in as a uh, with me and Oasis being in the same division, this match was very contentious for us. But but coming in as an outsider, uh, what was kind of the big points you took from this match? 
I would say, like, for this match, for one, this was one of my favorite matches of the week. Um, mainly because these two are very powerful teams. I already expected that from Bujins. But when I saw Gohans, I kind of expected it, but I didn't expect them to kind of explode to how they are right now. Um, I would say, I already know with Super Blue, his build... I, I think Oasis already said it, it kind of cuts through anything <laughs> for the most part. Um, so when I when they started off with that first match, I kind of expected it. I wanted it to go like head to head and everything kind of being equal, but Super Bowl actually took, um, what is it? Took the lead in that and completely decimated uh, Ultimate Gohan to some extent. He tried bringing it back, but unfortunately it was a little bit too late. The Kid Boo bill that you guys had on on Super Boo, I me mean, on Kid Boo, I actually, I would th- I would have thought that he would be spamming a lot more, but he seemed to like his Super Kamehameha in this match overall. Um, For a small stat, he threw eight out and only hit two, and one was in a clash. So you could say oh, he spammed really? <laughs> at a technical term. Yes. <laughs> was it was a fun stat to see at the end of the day. It's like, oh, look at all the B2s. Ah, never mind. <laughs> so, like, in that sense, like, you can't really complain because, like, he is using it to the great, like, to the extent that you guys want him to. The, probably, but it's not, like, you probably want him to ult more. Um, but... This was an even match. I it's unfortunate that Kid Gohan kind of dropped the ball when they kind of brought it back to even and all. Um, I I really don't have like there's a lot I can say about this match because like I said it was one of my favorites. It's very back and forth and it kept you engaged throughout the whole time. Um, I didn't know who was going to win <laughs> for the most part. So yeah, definitely one I would recommend if you haven't rewatched it a few times the commentators just go crazy it is just a a, quite an insane one and there's a lot to see from hybrids Uh, i think kid gohan he had a much more underwhelming week last week he just really popped off so both these teams have bright bright futures um and it's gonna be very interesting to see how it continues going because this is the group of death oasis over here sweating going man i gotta counter these (laughs) oh yeah Uh, and to kind of answer your question like um like what i think about the divisions it's just like if i was in that division right now i don't know what i would do be completely honest with you everyone is a scary opponent go against like like, this match this match kind of made you guys both of you guys go up to like another level that i was not expecting and it's just like i'm looking forward to our match coming up not really but (laughs) yeah we'll see how it goes do you have any final points oasis or oh i'm sorry i mean yeah you're good but speaking for someone in that division honestly (laughs) oh boy i mean personally speaking the only way i see myself making it to the postseason is being undefeated because I don't see Bujins or Hybrids dropping another match outside of this, outside of a divisional. Maybe to ED, maybe to ED, but after what we saw versus Resurrected Warriors, I doubt that entirely. I think they would beat ED, and Bujins would beat ED too. Uh, so it's it's yeah, very the worrisome. The Defenders I- match is a good bit away, but that that certainly had an interesting outcome as well. So. It is Very going good. to be an interesting league. Um, shall we get going on to match three then? It is uh, starting to yep. get a little dry on this topic. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little nervous. I don't want to reveal any secrets on accident. So we're going to get moving on to match three. <laughs> this is another wow. divisional and probably a uh, another match that was highly anticipated. I mean, Androids and Budokai. Uh, Budokai being a pseudo new team, um, kind of hard to say how they're going to do, but they have some heavy hitters and androids being the same. They did drop Aider, uh, but they gained Super 17 and 19. Um, so for those that didn't see week one, uh, they they are definitely a bit different this time, uh, starting with 17 versus Kid Goku. And this was all on Glacier. So this is Android's home map. They had everything coming into this uh, and they used a few boosts and so did Budokai. Budokai using some key boosts, Androids using some defense boosts. Um, as well as I think an attack boost, but yeah, this was, this was another pretty back and forth. Um, 
I think it was a match that that was starting off shaping up just like the previous match, but uh, Budokai just was slowly gaining advantages here and there. 17 just couldn't quite do what he needed to do uh, against Kid Goku uh, and having to uh, or going down with a bar left. 19 coming in. He does manage to take out Kid Goku, but he loses two bars in the process. Nom the Destroyer comes in and takes 19 out. Uh, just about forcing him to tag, coming in with Cell. Cell having the defense boost is attack plus two, defense minus one, but a defense plus one. So it's just attack plus two. Certainly an interesting strategy in Eternal Life. So they were kind of hoping for him to, to sway the, the tides of battle here. And it, it really was a, a huge back and forth for the most part from here on. It, it came down to how well could Super 17 do. I know his stats here don't look that impressive, but he did hit multiple ults. He did blow up Glacier, but it was after most people had basically already been wiped out. And uh, it just came down to a, to a two-man versus two uh, three-man. And it just was one that they just... They could not quite pull back. The small advantages by Budokai uh, were just too much and ended up with a one-bar Super 17 against a full health uh, early Goku coming in and just, just bopping him with an ult and a Kaioken. So overall, a fantastic match. Both teams going to one and one. And uh, man, just another another kind of back and forth. A uh, little unfortunate uh Donut was unable to be here. Oasis, what, what have you got on this just second slobber knocker right after coming out the Bujins and Hybrids match? I mean, personally, this is my favorite match of the week. The unexpectedness of this result is, it makes me very joyful. This is probably what epitomizes the league in its entirety. The fact that an underdog, a team like Budokai, eating a giant like the androids like they did, it, it makes me so happy, especially being that they were on similar levels in terms of boosts. They had similar characters. They had, it, it, I don't know what to say. I mean, besides the fact that Kid Goku beat Android 17, uh, Cell, Cell, Cell did his did his job. He did 53K. Uh, could he have done more? Yes. If he hadn't have flown back into Goku's ultimate. That's that's all I gotta say about that. Just job from Budokai, keeping it consistent. Kid Goku, Nam, working their best, working their butts off, giving their team a huge lead versus the androids, and then Uri Goku coming to finish it up. Just an excellent performance by this team. Yeah, Toshiro, what did you uh, think of this one? This was another uh, good match, divisional after divisional. So I would say, like, with this match, it, it was a good match, yes. I'm kind of shocked that Android 17 wasn't more aggressive than what he's usually shown to do. Um, and Kid Goku really, Kid Goku really showed his stuff. He really beat, beat um, 17 and kept on the field as long as he could. Um, he did, like, 60, he did 62K, which was great. The other one with Android Cell on their team and I can I get the frustration with Cell and everything being a former Android member is that sometimes like he would basically based on the bill that they had him on they had him with Savior and I'm expecting well I think that they wanted him to come in alt and then do some damage and, and some B2s like he usually does but unfortunately Cell doesn't like to do what his build usually has, uh, what we set up for him generally, uh, which kind of sucks. <laughs> um, but he still managed to do 58k. Um, it was unfortunate that he did run back into the ultimate that, um, what was it, N Goku did? Um, but it was, it was a great match overall. One thing that I kind of don't understand was that Super 17's ult. He, I think he ulted twice that match but the thing about it was that one of his ults were in the air but it still managed to explode the whole map which i feel like that that kind of put a disadvantage for androids which really sucks so hopefully they can turn it around later on and um kind of pick up where things went wrong and do better 
Yeah, I would say this was a uh, this was an uphill battle for Budokai being on Glacier. They put Super 17 last because they knew he would. Well, I don't actually remember, recall if it was last, but they put Super 17 in position. They knew he can blow up the oh. map, but they tried to plan as if that's not the biggest deal because him hitting multiple ults, which is what he did, is uh, probably a more positive than having Glacier. I think it just came down to some some unlucky moments. Android 19 missed three B2s on a one bar knob. Mm -hmm. And that, that probably was just the turning point of just too much for Super 17 and 19 to kind of combo together in a tag game. Because uh, Cell really did bring it a good bit back after um, 17's slight stumble at the beginning. But yeah, I just it was just an unfortunate uh, outcome. But at the same time, like you got to give it to Budokai. They really pushed their heart out, used two boosts, give gave two uh, key plus mm -hmm. ones to really try to give them that lead, that slight edge. So, uh, I mean, I have nothing else to say about this match. I think it was a it was a good one, and both teams certainly showed what they got. Oh, one thing I do want to say is I'm actually I really wonder how things would have went if Android 16 was in. And in, mm -hmm. probably instead of Android 19, because I know, I believe Donut said like in a chat or whatever that he didn't do too well against Kid Goku, which is a valid point. So I get the reasoning for benching him, but I, it just makes you wonder on how, how well you usually see 16 do, how much of a difference that would have made if he bent, probably bench Super 17 or 19 instead. So I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask the same thing. And although with your explanation of what Donut said in regards to 16 losing to Kigoku, now the decision to bench 16 makes more sense. Personally, I mean, with hindsight being 2020, I wonder how this match would have gone on if seven, Super 17 was benched. If Super 17 had not blown up the map, what would the outcome have been that they would have still had 16 as melee presence, and you would have still had so and he would have 19, all taking advantage of the water, key minus versus Budokai. I, it, I mean, it doesn't matter at this point, but it's definitely something to ponder. Yeah, a lot of what ifs. I think 19 combos with Glacier really well, so they kind of wanted him. Not only can they not charge, but because he's on a grab build, it was just it's just one of those combos that did really well in testing and preseason. So certainly a lot of what ifs, uh, but both teams being one and one means nothing's decided, at least for them. And I believe uh, with it only being week two, there's there's even the teams that are 0 and 2 are nowhere near out of it. So shall we get going on to, to match number four, the midway point for week two? Mm hmm. Sure. All right, Cold Kingdom versus Muscle. Now, this was a beefy matchup. These are two big boys. People were expecting lots of bigness coming out. And and they, they delivered pretty well. I would say Cold Kingdom really uh, pulled out all the stops. They had a, a, a rough preseason, to say the least, 0-4. But coming out, they are now a 2-0 uh, team, one of the few 2-0s, and Muscle being 1-1 after this match. So Cold Kingdom pulling out a win, but it was a fantastic performance by both. Um I mean, third form Frieza was was being kind of smashed by probably one of the other best members of the lead, uh, Super Saiyan Trunks, um, and he just managed to bring it back with a a really crazy double transformation into a rush clash into an ult, bringing Trunks all the way down from three bars to one and then dying, which allowed Raccoon to just plant Trunks plant Bojack and bring the match back in. Gotta give uh, credit to Bojack. His Psycho Barriers were used to block several, B or a, a couple B2s and push Raccoon back from many combos and grabs, but it's just the False Courage grabs were just a little too much for him to handle. Um, and and that lead that Raccoon gave was just enough for Metacooler to come in and kind of finish off the remaining of uh, Android, what was left of Android 13 and Master Roshi making Cooler for the second week in a row not have to come out. So his pitiful score of zero damage, zero B2 hits, uh, zero clashes, zero everything for two weeks now is putting him pretty low on the table, unfortunately. But uh, I think this was another good, great match. Uh, the, the first four matches of this week really made it made it very energy depriving. Uh, definitely a lot of the viewers were struggling to stay awake from all of these. Uh, how did you feel about this match, Oasis? Uh, I felt like it was a slop knocker, personally speaking. At the beginning of the match, for third form Frieza did a lot better than I expected versus Trunks uh, with 43k under his belt. 
Personally speaking, I'm very shocked at the fact that Super Saiyan Trunks was on defense plus two, eternal life, quick fast attack, not on his usual attack plus two build. So sure, this man stayed out for a lot longer. They able to live for a lot longer, but the additional damage that he lost out on could have helped him versus Raccoon, or do a little bit more damage versus Raccoon. But who's to say? Raccoon on the other hand. Raccoon doing 79,190 is staggering. Just like you were mentioning in your synopsis, false courage plus his planting 4K throws did a ton of damage versus muscle. They did not know what to do versus this man as he kept meleeing them, kept be doing, kept throwing. Thus, he was an impressive force versus muscle. Uh, I wonder how I wonder when we'll get to see first form cooler in a match. This keeps up, honestly. Uh yeah, I, not much to say here. So Cold Kingdom did fantastic as per usual. Yeah, Toshiro, how'd you feel about uh seeing a team with the pecs like Raccoon smashing over a team like Team Muscle? So I'm extremely biased on this match, mainly because Cold is in my division. <laughs> um, so I really wanted Muscle, and I went against Muscle week one. So I, of course, like we know it's possible to beat any team and all, but like I wanted Muscle to win against Cold just so then I can get like maybe a leg up against them and all. But it goes to show you that even though they had a bad preseason for a cold kingdom. And I think a, a little bit of it was due to like some Patara mistakes and everything like that. When they got everything put together, they're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. They were doing they form don't, testing on Frieza as well. So third forms, what they stuck with. Sorry about oh, that. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. Um, and that's another thing. It does show how much testing they did and everything. They've actually got a good handle on all their characters. And that is a real good thing. Like, it shows their work is actually being put to good use and all. Um, the whole thing with Trunks, Super Saiyan Trunks and everything, I do find it weird, like always to say that he wasn't on his usual attack build, but I guess they were looking for a little bit more sustainability um, and, of course, heals over time in order to, I guess, so he can get um, more damage out because he's usually good with his melee and B2, so kind of try to work on something else otherwise um for cold kingdom third from frieza did well especially with his transformations but i want to say like the, of course the star was raccoon <laughs> who is crazy um he's kind of terrifying with that savior where he already has a what is it a pseudo power body and everything or and then i think he had light body on top of that and mm -hmm. then he just combines it with false courage because he's already coming in with i think full blast talks with the kabuto secret arts sir that is very it's devastating especially if you cannot get him out like you really need a character that either has a draconic aura innate or something to kind of break through it before he can actually use the max power mode i feel I mean, like before he can get out of um, false courage yeah, I would say Bojack certainly didn't have a bad game plan by spamming the evil barriers or the psycho oh, yeah. barriers to keep him away. It just came down to spending so much resources trying to stop Raccoon from killing him instead of killing Raccoon ended up being a little downfall and 13 struggled in the same way. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was certainly a surprise. I think it probably was smart to have Broly out because he probably would have had an even harder time being that he's currently on a ult spam build so if he wasn't getting his kakarots off he would have done even less so i think their comp was good for the week it just ended up coming down to uh, a star performance from probably mm -hmm. the mvp of the week overall to be honest uh raccoon and i want to say i think i think muscle didn't really expect ojack to just spam his cycle barriers i think they were probably hoping that he spent his full power mode after he already came, went out of Savior and keep on spamming his build. So, I mean, his ult. So, like, it worked in a way for them to some extent, but not the way that they wanted it to, which kind of sucks. Yeah, Oasis, what were you uh, adding in there? I was just going to say that, uh, like Tosh was saying earlier, Kai and Raccoon, or not Kai, well, 
psychic term, kiting is when you try to do damage from far away without taking damage yourself. Honestly, the way to beat Raccoon is to do damage from afar from, from, uh, by doing Rush Blast, MB2s, and Bojack had that game plan with Trap Shooter. This is the one match where I would say Trap Shooter would be pivotal because you're going to hit with it no matter what, or for the most part, you're going to hit with it. And if you can keep Raccoon away from you, off his balance for long enough, and I, that would definitely shut down Raccoon for you to then move on to the next person. The fact that they didn't have they had more melee than B2s this match is what let Raccoon creep up on muscle members to you know plant them, melee them, whatever he liked. So I think if they had Broly in, who ha who, who who with his own pseudo power body with Kakarot, with Fight Body, he could have countered Raccoon with his ultimate, with his B2s, with his own power body. So. Agreed. I think, though, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty. Uh, this is a different cold than we've seen before. Uh, Raccoon, for the first time, being with them, so they're, and their builds being a little different than what Sentai's ever tried. Still some of the same Pataras, but also some different, so... I think overall it was just a it, it was a match that was a, kind of a testing ground for both as we saw with the Trunks build. But being a non-divisional isn't the biggest deal, uh, and being one-on-one -on -one for Muscle is certainly not something to uh, be disappointed with. So are you guys ready to get on to match five then? Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure about that? I don't, sound, I don't sound too excited. <laughs> for those wondering, uh, match five is Dirt versus Damic, or Dirt versus Oasis, as uh, he would have you believe. So uh, this was a, another uh, good match. Uh, I think this match was one that uh, showed off just how crazy teams can be and still not quite pull out the victory. Um, Tambourine versus Jero to start. Uh, Tambourine kind of got a, a pretty big lead coming in, uh, but Hercule coming in and pulling it back. Hercule having a, another standout performance this week with 76,000. Uh, I think he is certainly a member that, as everybody knows, you got to keep an eye out for. And uh, really just kind of was back and forth. King Piccolo coming in, doing his thing a bit. He was one of the probably non-standout performers of Namek. But I mean, overall, this was just a very, very good battle Uh a lot of members doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, and if you looked at just like the damage, you would think that Derp won this match because uh, their team total damage in, is a lot higher than that of uh, Team Namek. Or I wouldn't say a lot, but it is higher. But Namek managed to come out 2-0, uh, Derp going to 0-2. And, and, you know, there's a lot of potential for, for Team Derp here this season. But obviously, uh, Namek pulled out a, another victory uh, leading into a tie with the Bujins. So I'm gonna be straight up. I hated this match so much. <laughs> and for two reasons. A is the fact that uh, the tag game on Derp. Well, to be very clear. Derp had Derp had the most tags this week with five. Hercule being having two himself, two or three himself. Uh, I hated this match because Devil Might or Devil Man with the Devil Might Beam essentially take out one of my members with one B2, or one ultimate. Uh, and then the fact he had King Piccolo underperforming heavily by doing only 24K, it, it, this was destined to be a loss for us. But then somehow, some way, I decided I was going to stall. I was going to stall for Nuova to, you know, so he can prep himself up, I don't know, do whatever he does on the bench and finish the match. It, if I, as for someone who's not in, are not invested in either Namek or Derp, I would definitely say it was an uh, interesting match because you would have assumed Derp would come out on top of all the tags, all the good damage from Salza and Hercule, the great synergy Derp just had overall versus Namek. But I would say that the lack of healing on outside of eternal life definitely caused the downfall of the team because when you look at it we had tambourine with dende's healing we had nail with eternal life and well that's all the healing we had but versus the internal life on salsa their only damage dealer outside of hercule 
I think if they had like one more Dende ceiling, two two other Dende ceiling on Derp, they would have won this match. And that's why, uh, that's why I'm very, very sad by it. You know, like if they literally had just a little, like one or two different Batoras, they would have won it. So I don't think this victory was deserved at all. Yeah, Hercule doing three ults. So even though Majin Buu didn't fight for the Bujins, he fought for Team Derp. Uh, <laughs> Toshiro, right. how how do you feel about this match coming at a, at a, a more neutral standpoint? Overall, it was it was a good match. Um, Nail just did not want to go down <laughs> at all. Um, being able to do what sixty seven k even was just something. Uh, and then Nova actually did come in. He hit three out of the four B twos that he put in, which is great. Like I feel like Namek, you guys really do have a good footing on your characters as well, especially with a new character Nova. Um, now looking at Derp. Hercule really, Hercule kind of surprised me at the same time he didn't because I expected like the 9 to 12k present bombs or uh, dynamic uh, mess, them up, mess them up punch or whatever. Um, but he did three ults and that was, that's something that I was not expecting. And he actually, he only tagged once, but he was actually able to... Um, he was able to hit it multiple times, which I, I would expect the AI to actually block it a lot more because you rush B2s, if I'm not mistaken, aren't the best generally. No, so, they, they have uh, a lot of ways you can just physically block it and take zero damage. You can after image, you can do any sort of thing where mm -hmm. a beam, if you block it, you at least take some damage. Oh, yeah, true. And then uh, Sal Salza is another one is that kind of shocked me being hitting that 60k. I just, I just didn't expect that from him. Jero kind of being Jero and everything like that. I don't really have much to say about him. And then Devilman, I thought he would actually use the Devil Might Beam a few times, um, but I'm wondering how effective that would have been, because I think the only ones that it will really work on was Nuova or King Piccolo. And yeah, I'm not or... really sure how much of a difference that would have made. I mean, if he launched it on either of those two, it would have been immense damage, and that probably would have been the nails, the you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, and would have mm -hmm. given him a win. Or if he used it on tambourine, if he was playing early, that definitely would have done the same thing. Uh, yeah, you're right. Like I personally, I thought Devil Man on first glance would have had done worse than Jero, but you know, I Jero yeah. didn't. Do, yeah. yeah. Oh no! I mean, I I expected Devil like with the way Devil Man was acting and how you know he missed a bunch of B twos, wasn't too aggressive. I thought he did worse than Jarrell overall, but the damage numbers say otherwise. Uh, See, well, one thing I do just want to add real quick is that I feel like if I'm not sure, looking at Derp's build again for Jarrell, maybe if they found a way to maybe instead of like the serious and latent energy, maybe put in Beatles on Jiro and putting him in like a second slot. I'm actually wondering if that will work because he actually does have finish sign, I believe, in False Courage. So that False Courage could really help out, especially with that grab build that you guys have him on already. What they could do that he can will... kind of stay in there. I, if he if they went like you know attack plus two, uh, or attack plus one even, then these healing could be a secret art, serious fast attack even or light well, body well be careful there They're, they are sharing a lot of uh, Pataras with Supreme Kai because yeah. he is a extremely good mm -hmm. melee threat oh, yeah. so it, 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 there's a player. lot of ideas thrown around this is their first time with Dr. Jero mm -hmm. let's keep in mind so there's going to be some some questioning so I, I don't think that, that we could really say what's the right build seeing as how much they've oh, tested yeah. him it's so hard to say because he may be underperforming now, but who knows if they could get him. 19's been a surprise addition to Androids that's actually been like a decent mid-tier. So I, I just don't want to yeah. like go off too much into builds and, and get too many people confused because uh, I I think they have an idea with Dr. Jero. I don't want to try to put too many words in their mouth mm -hmm. here. No, I mean, that's just a suggestion. Just look at Raccoon, look at 19, both are grab-heavy characters for doing extremely well 
maybe take a, a, a hint from those two. Or maybe, they, like you just said, maybe they already have with the have the image in mind and they're just waiting to drop it on this. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, they have tried with Savior on them. So they have some some kind of nasty tech. Uh, Salza and Devilman both being very good characters. I mean, don't basically just don't take Team Derp lightly. Their name is just a name. Yeah, no. They could be named Team Always Lose and they won't always lose they will definitely have uh their moments this and if they've shown anything with their first two weeks by by fighting a good fight against bujins and now putting an even better one against namek they are they have nothing but but <laughs> wins coming in are you guys ready to move on to match number six then earth defense or earth defenders versus resurrected warriors yeah think... <laughs> please please all right yeah, I don't know about match five, though that didn't happen. Uh, so match six, Earth Defenders versus Resurrected Warriors, also known as Very Long Names. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to type it all out for this fancy slide. I love it. So this was a match that um, probably surprised most people. Uh, Earth Defenders had a fantastic run in the preseason, and um, Resurrected Warriors being a new-ish team, uh, there was uh, Afterlife from, from the previous season, but but this is basically like a whole new team. Uh, and they have a lot of characters from other teams, early Piccolo from Namek, uh, Aider from Androids, I mean, just all over the place. So they really are here to, to surprise. And this was a surprising match. Uh, really shocking uh, kind of turnout from Earth Defenders. I, I know Tien's a strong character, but Krillin, mid Goku, mid Vegeta are all extremely strong. And Yamcha being more of a mid tier character is not something to scoff at. So, uh, and especially with N Vegeta starting versus Krillin, I was definitely not expecting Krillin to just dominate uh, for, a, for a decent bit uh, before 18 just actually just went full sadistic mode this match. If you had to describe this in, in uh, an easy sentence, it's uh, it would definitely have to be 18 sadistic. Uh, so both teams going to one in one, uh, making the group of death uh, have an 002s, but uh, overall, like, this was just a fantastic match, and it, it's kind of hard to, to describe what happened. <laughs> I'd really recommend watching it, because it, it was had some crazy turns. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, definitely, before this match even started last week, we had, I think I was the only person who voted for Resurrected Warriors because of this exact thing, because of 18 spammy ults, because of early Piccolo and his super special beam cannon. That's a lot of, I wouldn't say lucky occurrences, but a lot of fortunate occurrences happening for Resurrected Warriors, all of them connecting, all of them shutting down. The most important character, I think, on Earth Defenders, Mig Goku. The fact that he was shut down so quickly, due to Statistic 18, due to Special Beam Cannon, truly put the match in Resurrected Warriors' favor. I mean, truly. And then the, the fact that Videl beat Yamcha so handedly, I did not see that coming at all. Videl seemed like a problem child. That seemed like, yeah, she did seem like a problem child up until the start of the season. So for her to beat Yamcha that well, Yamcha only doing 14K and Videl only doing, or Videl doing 48,460. Uh, it's stupendous. Like the, I feel like this team of all the other teams we talked about thus far has a real handle on their character. Sure, M Vegeta didn't do as well as Krillin, but he ended up tagging. He still has Vegeta at the end of the day. So if he had, if push came to shove, and he had to come back out. I have no doubt he would have done, you know, forty k or above. So just all around good job, Resurrected Warriors. Nothing to say against Ed. They're still a powerful team. Krillin is still Krillin, one of the best starters in the league. Vegeta's mid Vegeta. He's a Vegeta after all. Base mid Goku. He were able to stick around longer, you know, throw out spirit bombs, transform. And this definitely would have been a closer match. Especially since his B his B2s do 10k. His ultimate is like 20k. Yeah. Uh, overall, great job of Resurrected Warriors. I hope to see you keep it up. Edie will bounce back next week. We'll see. Yeah, both teams being at one and one means this match for a non-divisional uh, is certainly a boost, but at the same time is is one that might not be remembered uh, once we get into a few more weeks as uh, it could easily fall off. Uh, and certainly a risk with Videl being that she only has Rush B2s, as we talked about earlier. It's a lot easier to handle that. Uh, man... Toshiro, how do you feel about this? Resurrected Warriors is in your division, man. They, they're they now one and one. They're coming after you. 
No, right? <laughs> um, yeah, this is another team that I, I kind of same thing with Cold. I kind of want Ed to win. And aside from biases, I actually me, me and Oasis thought crying Edie... in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought Ed would win mainly because they're so consistent, um, especially with mid Vegeta and most recently what they had with um, with Vegeta mid vegeta is crazy so like the damage that he did week one i believe he got like in the 70k range and all and still stayed on top of all uh, he was on his game but this week what he he didn't do that well um how much how much did he do he did he did 41 he did 41k, 41K. so him so and krillin did their did jobs yeah yeah um Yamcha, I don't know. Yamcha, to be honest with you, I don't know what to expect from Yamcha. Because he's one of the main ones that I have not seen a lot of to, I guess, make a clear judgment about. Because in my in my head, when I look at ED, the main people that I think about is, of course, mid-Goku, um, mid-Vegeta, and Tien. For the really? most part. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mid Goku more so, especially during the testing season at, with the whole spirit bomb thing going on. Mid Vegeta is a Vegeta, so you kind of expect good things from him. And then with Tien, Tien is always consistent, and especially I think they've been taking him off his um, his usual tank build. No, he, and he, he's he's been on back something. on it since the season restarted. Oh, that was only preseason they had him on super. Okay. Okay. I think the time that they did have him on Super, he still did decently well with it. Um, yeah, but seven, either way, seven point ult. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but either so way, uh, I know Resurrected Warriors, like I said, I wasn't expecting them to win mainly because it's ED, but they really, they surprised me. Um, 18, 18 being her spammy self and staying in in their face and everything on one of the advantages of being an android where you don't have to charge at all um and then videl they they put a class boost on her and she won a lot of the majority of her classes so i want to say overall it was a really good match um it did take me by surprise overall um but yeah the damage were pretty was spread pretty even amongst all um, resurrected warriors um course besides and vegeta but that's another story like they still all did their job and we know what they're capable of yeah i mean i i don't know if there's much else i, I think earth defenders mostly uh you could say they had a low roll uh yamcha losing out on a lot of clashes missing his old uh mid goku eating an ult right away there's just the, there's basically like this match may have been a, a surprise but certainly one that showed resurrected warriors are here to play and earth defenders are not the uh, indomitable machine, but they are still a fierce competitor because just one or two things uh, go in their way, and this this would have been a way different match. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, do you have any final points to make, Oasis? Uh, besides the fact that I'm proud of early Piccolo in this one instance, <laughs> as Lee knows, he's definitely hit or miss, and I'm very glad that he's you know hitting in these past team, in this past match, and I hope he continues to. I see future trade opportunities. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get moving on to match number seven then? GT versus Royals. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. That so the match. The Grand Tour versus Royals. Uh, match seven. This one leading up. Uh, I think this was another match that uh, a lot of people had uh, really couldn't fully decide you have two brand new teams going at it and I honestly i, I kind of feel bad for gt i know uh this match came down to some like really close moments and i think they really showed a lot of of prowess here and i think their characters did what they were supposed to do it was just unfortunate that um royals just kind of came out with the big end game emperor pilaf hitting an ult after missing a few week one uh, Mecha Frieza hitting, I believe it was three ults, 95,000. He almost went elite off this week. And it's just kind of what do you do when you have a member on the other team almost going elite? Uh, I mean, there were some weird moments. Lord Slug tagged at nearly full health twice. 
So you thought GT, maybe they have it. They're, you know, the Royals are kind of dicking around. But no, I, I, in the end, uh, Royals just had one member come out and just just do a little too much, putting Royals to 1-1 and in GT to 0-2. Oh so even though it was a little unfortunate for Royals, and I feel like had Pan maybe not Mr. Olt or Baby came out and had a little bit of a better matchup, I think it could have gone either way. Uh, but I, again, too early to count either team out. But man, what well, Royals really showing some of that scariness they had in the preseason. Uh, Oasis, what do you think of this match? Uh, so to start off with, I had no idea that GT meant Grand Tour. <laughs> literally didn't know that uh but in terms of the match i definitely would say it's I, well, okay the fact that slug tagged after only taking a bar damage is it's, it's something uh it's like king vegeta the past yes is that thank you that's who i was thinking <laughs> yes it's exactly like king vegeta in the past oh my goodness <laughs> but oh i don't miss that at all but okay uh to the match gt uh gt as we said before gt has the power behind it to do whatever they want like get the like goku kid goku if given the well, momentum GT can, yeah yeah kid gt go you know who i mean <laughs> if given the momentum he can definitely do you know 60k by himself super baby same thing pan pan's the one character that i'm definitely uncertain by uh Super plus two, I feel like it's kind of a hindrance, but that's just me. And then once again, Super Saiyan 4, Vegeta, uh, he can do whatever he wants at any point. Is a Vegeta. He wants. <laughs> exactly. He did yeah. 58k versus a actually a bad matchup for him because tanks typically have the advantage versus spam builds because they can just soak up all the damage taken in by you know, a spammer and then dish it back out through their own V2s, through melee. Whatever they want. So he did quite well versus Slug, even in that bad matchup, and still went to do more than his share. Uh, but of course, we had, can't just over, we can't underest, overstate Freeze's involvement in this. Like, he did so much. 95k. It's how many ultimate store guard? I, I believe it was three. He used two on Pan and just wiped her off and blew up the planet, and then hit a third on GT Goku. Yep. Yeah, which is uh, definitely unprecedented. You, Pan didn't really have a chance to show what she could do. And GT Goku, same thing. Honestly, he didn't have a chance to show what he can do. He couldn't get up to Mecha Frieza due to her the B2s. Mecha Frieza was beating him in the melee game. What, what was he supposed to do? Overall, just great showing by Royals. GT is, uh, I mean, like you already said, too early to tell what the power level is for all these teams. Once GT finds her footing, oh lord, they are going to be very scary. Yeah, we've certainly seen some impressive performances by Baby Vegeta. This being the first season, he's allowed to transform. Uh, so we didn't quite get to see it, but I'm, I assume at some point this season we will see uh, Super Saiyan Ape uh, Vegeta, Baby Vegeta. Uh, I would say... One thing I forgot to mention is Pilaf grabbed Pan out of her Rush B2 ult. Another reason why Rush B2 ults can be a little frustrating uh, to manage some time. Uh, so Toshiro, what did you think of this match? This was, a, this was a scary one, seeing Mecha Frieza do what he did. Most definitely. <laughs> um, overall, I would say like the first matchup for the starters, I feel like I'm kind of going to go, go against what Oasis said. I, feel, I actually feel like... Well, even though Slug had a defense build, I actually feel like Super Saiyan Vegeta had the advantage because while he, he actually had a key plus two with fighting spirit and indignation and all, um, he would be able to charge as fast as he can and still dish out all the damage and everything. Um, I actually feel that did that would have countered Slug a lot and actually it showed that because I, he, he was actually a bar in the lead or a bar and a half or so. But with Slug's early, early tag and bring it in Pilaf, that was not the best matchup because, once again, Pilaf acts like an android. So in that case, what can you do? Um, so I feel like that was a good counter to it. Slug's, Slug's tag did actually surprise me a lot um, because I'd never seen a character actually tag that early after only losing a bar of health. Overall, Mega Freeze, of course, the star of this whole match. 
I really 95k almost elite. I kind of wasn't expecting that based off of Mecha Frieza's past performances in the old in um in previous seasons, but it Royals got them working, and I am not looking forward to going against them from uh, at all. Three alts, and then what did he have? Kabito secret arts. Yep. So he can just go back into max power mode again. But that's the way from GT. They they did all they could. Super Saiyan Vegeta was definitely their star player in this. I know Baby definitely has the potential to do even more. Um, GT Goku as well. It's just, I don't know if GT Goku has like a defense minus or anything like that because he's either a child or if he's a Super Saiyan 3 form. Because he's a child, he has a defense minus one or two. I don't remember it's when. It's not it... minus two. I, I think it's minus one. I would have to pull up the, the file we have in the Discord. But uh, okay. yeah, I, uh, I don't think yeah. it's so much so that it's like a big issue because a lot of people have the same defense minus. But yes, agree. Yeah, yeah right. like it, it can really do, it can do its own toll in that case. But I feel like they're in the right direction. It's just the bad matchup with a spamming Mecha Frieza and everything. Mm-hmm. If they went against any other team, they probably would be good. So. Yeah, I definitely cannot count GT out uh, at all. I think they have a lot. And um, I mean, obviously, as a new team, they have a lot of eyes on them because they don't really have a lot of preset builds coming in. A lot of these characters have floated around a lot in the league. Um, so they kind of have some a lot more disadvantages people may realize. And that's why I think most people want to see them do well. So, shall we get on to the last match, the one that we brought Toshiro on for today? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. This is a, a slow burner uh, to the to the final divisional. So, we started with two, uh, or really the first four matches were insane. Both divisionals quite crazy. So, match number eight, Sentai Squad versus Rugrats. So this was one uh, to end the week with the divisional is a great thing. Uh, we might be implementing that more in the league. I say we, I am not staff, so I can't say anything. Uh, Toshiro is staff, but I'll let him get onto that when uh, we get to him. So Jace versus Super Saiyan go tend to start. This was a week they decided to not have go tanks with a double Broly's ring and different builds. Um, this was a, a, a good, a strange start. Uh, I don't think we've seen Jace on a melee build in a while. He went through most of preseason with a super build, but he also doesn't usually start because he likes Savior. So, certainly was a interesting start, and um, unfortunately, it, it went a little worse for them. He having to tag, and man, it's just kind of from then on uh, had some insanity. Sam Man coming out and doing. He barely got double. Uh, I'd say double ditch. He barely hit ten thousand last week against Kaiju. He kind of. Uh, had an unlucky time, but he went insane this week's. But Rugrats fought straight back with Trunks coming in. A lot of ults fired by both of these guys. Uh, really seeing a lot. And, man, this match for the middle bit there was impossible to say who would come out on top. But uh, like a uh, earlier match in, in Androids versus Budokai, uh, Rugrats just were taking advantages here and there. It was always making someone tag out with one bar while having two, uh, always hitting that extra B2. And uh, with Aureli coming in and, and cleaning up Say Woman, basically kind of shutting her down almost instantly, uh, it, it came down to could Birder do it? And he just, he had a lot of B2s, but like none of them hit. And uh, unfortunately, they were unable to make Rugrats put all four members, uh, Cell Jr. staying on the side and not coming out. Uh, ending this with Rugrats going 1-1 one and, one and Sentai 0-2. Oh so, uh, might have been a frustrating showing for Sentai with how much they threw out and just not quite connecting. But I think overall it was a very strong match, and this was a, a match showing that um, even though uh, Rugrats struggled a little bit in the first week against uh, the, the weirdness of muscles uh, rotating builds, uh, that they, they are definitely ready to fight and not going to let it keep them down. And Sentai obviously showing a lot this week too with their uh, creativity and their builds. Uh, let's go to Oasis first, because uh, we're going to be sitting on Toshiro for a hot second. Uh, what do you think of the match, Oasis? Uh, I think it was a, it was one of the less energetic matches, in my opinion. I definitely say the boost by the Rugrats may have been a bit overdone. The key was, you know, three Zenny on Kibiyo Secret Arts. 
uh, to Zenny on light body. Definitely good pickups, especially for a team. Well, maybe not the light body, but definitely feels <laughs> through art, especially versus the team that's mainly pri that's primarily focused on you know rush B twos. Uh, on the side of Sentai Squad, I must give Sayaman his due. Like, 68k, including his fight versus Kid Trunks. That there is impressive. I said it time and time again that Kid Trunks is probably fourth best player in this week, so far, just because of Eternal Life, because he's an android who can charge on his own. That's because you know all he needs is indignation and uh, serious or serious and latent energy, or it doesn't even matter what boost you give him. The man just keeps going and going and going. And the fact that Saiyan Man was able to put a dent in him and do 68k, I, that that's impressive. It doesn't matter if you win or lose this match. That there is impressive. Like you keep that and take that with you on your journey up to the preseason to the postseason. Uh, so the Cell Junior didn't come out week but that's that's fine that's to be expected especially with Aurelia and Trunks in those that duo Aurelia and Trunks those two are a devastating child you know a combination who can pretty much destroy any team if they feel like it because Aurelia and her super plus two B twos and take someone out in moments Trunks with key plus two he stays on A1 for as long as he can doing melee doing B twos it's 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 very scary. Overall, definitely good building by Rugrats with Goten being on attack plus one, Raleigh being on super plus two, all strengthening their best features and assets. But I cannot stress how proud I am of Sentai Squad getting say a man to do sixty eight K versus K Trucks. Like that's probably the best part of the match in my opinion. Yeah, so certainly uh, had some impressive moments. Uh, all right, I'm taking the chain off Toshiro. He is foaming at the mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was some flame maybe thrown out by Oasis here. Uh, but uh, yeah, come on, brother. Tell us what happened. So to be honest with you, the only the only time I'm ever going to use Zinni is actually in a divisional. I will probably never use it in the actual in a regular match. Um and so with Aureli, my thinking behind it was when I put her on Savior and all, give her the light body. So then basically she will have ultimate body because she already has a pseudo um, power body in max power mode. So it will kind of benefit in giving her the light body as well, considering that while I think, say a woman can't um, do key blasts and everything, all other three characters can or all other four. But I knew, I'm pretty sure I expected Ginyu to be out already. Kid Trunks, the Capito Secret Arts, I just didn't know how he would perform without it. Because he usually has that on his regular build. So I just put that on there mainly to just be safe and safer than sorry. Um, based on my lineup and everything, I would probably say it was, I I think, because so I talked to Gomo a little bit about it. And he was expecting that we started Cell Jr. against him, um, which for me, Cell Jr. is never a good starter, at least in our tests and everything. But I was mainly focused on um, Jace or Saiyaman starting um, overall. So in that sense, it did kind of work out for me. I, I don't know. I, Kid Trunks... I really enjoyed this match overall. Of course, besides my match, I mean, besides Bougians versus Hybrids, this is actually one of my favorite matches. Um, Kid Trunks showing that he was still consistent because last week he did around 76K. This week he did 75K. Um, Cell Jr., unfortunately, not able to get in there, but I can't really complain because we did take the win on it. Say a man. Say a man really did a number on us. And based on, to be honest with you, based on the testing season um, during the offseason and all, he was one of our main people that we went against um, that really destroyed our team anytime we went against Sentai, him or Jace. So those were the main two people that are really trying to plan against. Um, but otherwise, I don't really have much to say. Goten, Goten did his job. He did 53K, and I'm happy about that. I was kind of expecting him to kind of do ult 
do some ults when he got lower in his life because he tends to do that. But hey, like I said, I can't really complain. We won. Uh, every member of ours did well that actually showed up on the field. And yeah. I guess to pry a few questions since we have you here, uh, were you expecting the Jace to just have a complete uh, build swap to melee? And if uh, Birder had hit all those B2s, do you think Cell Jr. would have had an all right matchup against the B2 spamming Birder? So I guess let's start with the Jace uh, build swap. What do you think of uh, that impacting your team? Actually, I, was, I wasn't I was thinking Jace would be on an attack build at all. Um, based on, I believe, their preseason matches, he was usually on the super build. Um, so I, that's what I was mainly expecting. So seeing him starting for one and also on attack wasn't really something I was expecting at all. I felt a little bit more confident because I know how good Goten is in um, in melee, um, hence the attack plus one. So at, I, like I said, I wasn't really expecting the whole J starting and attack plus, attack plus two which I'm wondering if that really hurt them overall, but I believe that the he's done, he had that build a few times in testing. So I'm pretty sure he did well. Maybe it's just like a lower roll on it. In terms of the Birder question, you were saying, can you repeat that one? Yeah, it was just if Birder had hit all the B2s that he threw out and made and forced Cell Jr. to come out, how do you think that matchup would have gone with uh, Cell Jr. versus Birder? Because I know you guys have had Cell Jr. on Eternal Life and other melee focus builds. So this week, at funny enough, we actually, um, I actually ended, we actually ended up not really using uh, any healing beats used on Cell Junior, um, because we find that sometimes he does a little bit better without it, um, but he, I feel like he may have gotten a good matchup versus Birder, um, the main thing I think my issue with Birder is that of course his fast melee can really trip us up. And if he really got into it, he could have really destroyed us, especially against Cell Jr. While he does have fast melee, it's probably not the best against him. Um, combined with his B twos that he can probably that he would do, Cell Jr.'s charge rate is not the best at all. So, depending on how low he was, if he was able to use his fighting spirit very well, Birder probably would have broken his guard and would probably be able to get a lot of free damage on him if the B2s hit. Which kind of sucks that, um, what is it, his rush B2 isn't tracking at all. Because I feel like if that was the case, we would have been in a lot of trouble. Agreed. Yeah, I think it's a little unfortunate that he has a more straightforward one. Definitely the character I would have bet that they transitioned to melee if they were going to. Uh, Oasis, do you have any questions for our guests then uh, on this match here? Uh, not particularly. I would say that, honestly, Toshio pretty much answered all my questions in his statements. Uh, you, so why did you bench Cyberman, is my question. That's probably the only one I have. Um, then my question to you is, have you seen Cyberman? <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing. I was like, unfortunately, like, statistically, is a lower role character uh, and struggles I, a lot more. <laughs> don't get me wrong, Cyberman is decent like to some extent he's a 30k character but in a divisional i really didn't even want to try to take a chance of him doing even less than that and then having to rely on three characters because at that point i just look at it as a 3v4 yeah i think his God. best matchup is captain ginyu so when with predicting ginyu out it's kind of hard to have cyberman in because tank versus tank cyberman might be able to pull that out but otherwise and i i can see why i do also uh, want to throw in there real quick that cyberman while i usually have him like maybe on a defense plus three i believe he has a, either a defense minus one or two so that really that's just a defense i think it's a minus two so really, that's only a defense plus one, and then I'm only I don't have much to work on. That's fair. Uh, you probably already touched on this, but so would do you think that having Gotings in? Or the question is, why do you not want to have Gotings in this week? Gotings is too much of a wild card. 
Yeah, I, I think if um, we go back and look at the test footage, which as a tester, I could tell you talking with Tosh on some of those. <laughs> yeah, take it away, Tosh. Well, what, what do you think so fun about him? So I would say this. Um, Gotenks, when he's in Super Saiyan 1, is the best Gotenks. Super Saiyan 3 is second. Um, but base form is... Uh, I hate I hate base form. And Gotenks. what does he like to do when and... he's in Super Saiyan 1? galactic donuts no he likes oh, to go to base of... form oh <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about you talking about team gohan that likes to do that team oh, gohan yeah. as well but uh, the last <laughs> several tests uh we've been seeing a lot of uh base form go tanks and i think oh that, yeah yeah that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. major factor uh, that's what i was yeah, expecting that's... you to say it's, oh we were gonna see the worst form ever <laughs> oh yeah yeah no definitely that is the worst form because you can never plan on it and even if i give them kabito secret arts to give them max blast stocks, they are going to transform into base. And the other thing about it is the reason why I didn't have go tanks in one of the main reasons is because I have the limiter on kid trunks. Goten is the only one that can initiate the fusion. But the thing with Goten is that he likes to do it really early, either on his second bar um, or in his yellow bar. So he tagged I me, mean, he fuses real early, and I didn't want to take away from Trunks' potential. Gotcha. And all. So that's one yeah. of my main reasons why I didn't we didn't even touch it. I asked my team, and Lloyd was just like, Are we talking about this again? No, we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, I think it's unfortunate that Trunks is kind of their main damage dealer, and you have to lose him to gain Go Tanks. So unless it's really worth it. I mean, would you want to fuse, you know, like your worst character with your best character in Namek? Well, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> I don't know why I'm even surprised. All right, you heard it here. Next season, we're going to have Fuse Piccolo. No. Yes. Maybe one day. <laughs> Kami Piccolo. All right, well, you guys want to get on to the predictions here and finish up with a few questions to leave the audience? Sure, hey, whatever. Alrighty then, let's get on to the predictions. So week three, uh, man, gotta feel bad for Sentai. Starting off almost immediately with the divisional, Sentai versus Resurrected Warriors. Uh, I personally uh, would have to give it to Resurrected Warriors after seeing the results of this week. I think 18 is just been on a roll and Videl as well. But I mean, it, I could easily see it going either way. I think Sentai is on the cusp of greatness as well. Uh, what do you guys think? So before I get into my side of the predictions, I must make note that last week he we kept track of you know our predictions, and I came up on top with five right, three wrong. Uh, Door guard and Donut came up with four right, four wrong. Hey. So if you're if you're in the uh, you still offer a gambling league or no? All right, which gamble? The gamble. Uh, <laughs> can gamble points uh, away in the Discord server. Dang, I wish we still had the butt, but if you're betting men and women, I think you know who you should listen to more than on this cast. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Toshiro has a perfect record. So, yeah, Oasis, <laughs> who do you think would come out on top between uh, Sentai and Resurrected Warriors? Uh, Resurrected Warriors, in my opinion, I think that if they have either Early Pickle or 18, they have a great shot of winning this. If they have Aider, plus one of those two other characters, even more so. Uh, they bench who they bench they benched week, Aider. actually so they'll have Aider this That's... next week there you go there you go so i definitely think resurrected warriors has this all right i think uh toshiro what do you think this is uh, uh divisional in your division so my want i want sentai to win actually um since since we already we won against sentai and everything I don't want to be tied with Resurrected Warriors for and for when it comes to our divisional. Even though it's like week 15, if I can have any distance between us, that would be great. Yeah, so I Sentai want Sentai call, to uh, Toshiro. Maybe he'll lend some Zenny. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I want Sentai to win. But I honestly feel like Resurrected Warriors will probably pull out the win. They have Aider, who is really consistent. They got 18 working on her spam. Of course, you got a Vegeta. Early Piccolo and Videl are still kind of up in the air, but looking at Videl's and both of their um, performances against ED, 
I got to just give it to Resurrect Warriors. Yeah, so that's a 3-0, but with it being a divisional, honestly, this could go either way with boosts and all kinds of other stuff. And Sentai's been very creative with uh, handling problems in builds, so it'll yeah, be a hard one. Yeah, and that is another thing. They didn't use any boosts against us. So yeah, they might since they had two divisionals in a row, they, yeah, they could be saving it. All right, match number two will be Cinema versus Budokai. Um, I would have to give it to Budokai. Uh, obviously, they're winning... Uh, this week over Androids was is is a partial factor, but they also seem to have their builds a little more set. I know Cinema still struggling with Zengaya pretty hard. Um, I think they've they've basically found how to make her work, but results wise, from her and Gogeta are still a little up in the air. So I'd have to give it to Budokai for match number two. I would have to agree with you. The fact that Gogeta is going to be is going to be in. He's been struggling as of late. He's not, good. He's not the worst character on the team by far, no, 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 but in comparison to how Budokai showed up for his androids, how Nam, Kigoku, how they're doing very well, early Goku with the transmission Kamehameha, and, you know, early Goku with his spirit bomb, and Cyborg taught that they put him on a defensive build, maybe, then his spam can definitely swing the tie in their favor. Overall, Budokai probably has this. Um... You can do a vote, a zero, a null vote, if you don't feel like saying it, Toshiro. Don't ever feel like you're pressured into this. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably have to abstain because they're both of their sides performing the best at times. He still has that crazy damage output. He likes to sax his finish signs and everything, have great B2s and all. We've seen Turles and Garlic Jr. and Fasha all do their jobs tag and do much more especially last week then on the other side then you of course you have kid goku who just did very well against androids and goku with his instant kamehameha which is generally undodgeable and he usually comes in with savior if i recall so um and then of course you have nam so <laughs> yeah a, a, an interesting Too matchup much. I can't agree. Yeah. So, technical 2-0 Budokai for Cinema with an abstain for just how close of a match this uh, should come out. So, match number three. Before we move on. Yes. Uh, my question, my only question is, who do you think would win? Tur between Turles and Kegoku, Fasha and Nam, who do you think would have the advantage? Between, if that was the duo, who would win? That That's a hard one to say. Um, I think... You're, you're pitting two of the best of cinema against two of the best of Budokai, so it, that's just the point. Like, the if point. it's just that, I would probably say Budokai, because Nam and Kid Goku. Mainly Nam. But... That's all, yeah. I, guess. That's all I have to say. All right. <laughs> all right, so match number three. <laughs> we have a uh, Cold Kingdom versus Hybrids. Uh, this is a comeback week for Hybrids after losing their divisional uh, and Cold coming in 2-0. This match, I this one is so hard to say. Um, being in the division, I would have to put my vote on Cold, not just because they're 2-0 and they, they've only been winning with three players, uh, but just like it's just like so hard to see them them dropping too hard early here. But at the same time, it's it's so hard to predict uh, how this match would go. I think if I if I had to, I would I would abstain as well on this vote for me. But I'm gonna give it to Cold based on their first two week performances. I'm not abstaining. I'm giving it the hybrids. Bias here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oasis. What is your vote? Break the tie. So I would. I mean, I know I initially said the hybrids won't drop a game past Bujins, but I do think Cold will win it simply because. King Cold's in, and I think King Cold beats Ultimate Gohan, and or Kid Gohan, whoever they start. Coombs is a monster, apparently. He's as a monster. They've been beating teams with only three people. I think it's safe to say that you will probably win this. Yeah, 2-1 for Cold, but lots of bias here, so maybe don't take this one as literal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> match number four, we have Dirt versus Kaiju. Oh man, this one's uh, another hard one to pick. Uh, it is home for Derp, so almost based off that, I'd have to to give it to them. But I think I'll have to give it to Kaiju. They still have uh, two members who can transform without the moon, and Derp have a lot of rush B2s. So I think I'd have to give it to Kaiju because they just have that slight natural uh, bonus to them. 
Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree. Kaiju, I feel like, has the advantage with Barda coming back in. Uh, Kaiju would probably either bench Apple or King Vegeta. But either way, they still have enough firepower to deal some damage to Dirt. Versus, you know, Salza, uh, Kibio Kai, etc., etc. And then with the transformation that you were mentioning, if Kaiju does take advantage of their eight forms, it's definitely going to be hard for Dirt to do damage via B2s against Kaiju. So Kaiju just has a natural advantage here. I'm actually going to say Dirt, um, only because Dirt has a lot of rush B2s and all. It doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that Kaiju cannot um, cannot transform. Because they even if they could destroy the map, they can't. Bangwing Village is undestructible. Yeah, it's mostly <laughs> King Vegeta and Scouter can transform. That's it. Yeah. So if and Scouter hasn't been the best, unfortunately. Um, so really, then in my head, I'm only counting King Vegeta, and I would say that if they have Hercule in, um, of course, Kibito is going to be in there, probably starting, and he's one of their best best players. Um, and if, of course, if you have Devilman in there and he actually ults, then it's a wrap, I feel like. So yeah. I'm going dirt. I would definitely say this one uh, might be more towards Kaiju if they were home, but 2 1, but certainly uh, one in which either team, uh, I mean, this is about as 50 50 of any of the matches, I would say. So match number five ED versus Muscle. Both these teams got something to prove uh, after losing their matches. I would have to give it to uh, Earth Defenders. I think they are going to be a... They, they have a little bit less issues. I think Muscle with 13 kind of struggling these first two weeks. And uh, Bar, uh, not Bardock, Bojack as well. They have a little bit more of a hill to climb with getting the uh, damage out to take out uh, with TN coming back in. So I'd have to give it to Earth Defenders. I personally give it to Muscle. Uh, sure, Muscle has been struggling a little bit with Bojack, uh, not really as much, but with 13, who has been not the most consistent these past couple of weeks. But I don't play past them for Trunks to give them a lead. Early on versus whoever they start, maybe it be Yomsher, Krillin, etc. And then with Broly coming in with his ultimates and his power body, he by himself could definitely turn the tie in their favor if they were to be losing. Uh, Earth Defenders will have Tien in, who, as we already, as we know, is a very strong character. But in my opinion, it's going to really come down to who Earth Defenders bench. If they bench, you know, either mid Vegeta or mid Goku. I definitely feel like this matches muscles to win. If it's Yamcha, then maybe not. But regardless. Also, has a lot of damage on their side, has a lot of potential to show up, just like Resurrected Warriors did. I feel like they will this week or next week. I had to probably give it to ED. Only because even if ED benches like Vegeta or um, they still have Goku with their... um. With his um ult coming in with say of course with Savior and all, you have Krillin who's still pretty good at melee, and then Tien who, who have who they have on their um tank build, he's usually good and all. He has a very good survivability rate. Um, if, even if and then on the flip side, if they bench mid Goku, you have Vegeta who's very aggressive. I just feel like Ed has a lot more aggression towards muscle, and everything that will actually help them pull it out. All right, so we got 2-1 ED to Muscle, um, but again, with both teams coming in with something to prove, it'll be a interesting one to see. Uh, match number six, we have GT versus Namek. Um, I'm going to have to, <laughs> unfortunately, give this one to Namek. I, I think GT is kind of like Muscle, where they have, uh, they're just struggling a little bit with getting the damage out of their characters, more so than their characters being bad. It's just... They're just struggling to get the damage needed to to pull out the victory, and Namek's been on a roll lately, uh, so I'd have to give this one to Namek. Skipping, oh wait, no. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would hope that we win. We have Lake Pickle in. We uh, have a lot of firepower. We are finally ha having teamwork in the team. I mean, this is probably the best Namek has ever been in League's history, so I would hope to see uh, they do very well versus one of the newer teams. 
probably might cement us more as a, a top 10 team in the league after this, maybe. I don't know. But of course, GT, as GT could finally find their stride here because as we already know, GT can take a can take a match whenever they feel like it. Just when do they feel like it? And I, it's probably going to be here because why not? I so I will probably go with Namek as well. It is heavily dependent on because GT has to have Sin in, and Sin hasn't been their best. If Sin decides to actually use the better B two, um, besides tra- of course, other than trap short, uh, trap shooter, super trap, then shooter. yeah, super trap shooter, then I feel like GT would have the advantage. But just based off of what I've seen from what Namek does and everything, I feel like Namek has an advantage overall. It's heavily dependent on how their characters act. So uh, a hesitant three zero uh, for Namek. Moving on to match number seven, we have Androids versus Bujins. I'm a Bujin supporter, enough said. Uh, Oasis? <laughs> well, Bujins has this easily. It doesn't matter who they bench, doesn't matter who they have, Bujins win. I, wow. It is on Glacier, I, keep in mind. I don't care whether it's on Freezy Ship <laughs> or, or, or Roshi's house, Bujins win. All right, this is going now. Toshiro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Androids. <laughs> Oh, mainly because Super 17, he has been very good. He can actually, he's, him and Night Team, they have been decent at absorbing people's um, B2s and everything as well. Um, 16 has to be in as well. So if, I feel like 16, if he gets his momentum going, it's going to be very devastating for you guys. And if hopefully Cell or 17, regular Android 17 actually works out, yeah, I feel like they will give you a run for your money, but it will probably be close. 19 does counter Kid Buu. Uh, every time Kid Buu's thrown a Kamehameha at him, it has been absorbed. Um, yeah. So. That, that's moving... how I got, how I got. <laughs> Yeah, moving on to match eight then uh, and getting away from Glacier. Uh, we have Rugrats versus Royals. Um, they, I mean, this one's a, a close one. Uh, I think Royals, if they come out with what they did this week, it'll be an extremely hard one. But both teams won... Uh, pretty dominant victories to a degree, uh, not making all their members have to do a lot. So, I mean, I, it's another one I'd want to abstain on because I, I just have no idea who to pick. Uh, I guess because of our guest, I will go with Rugrats. But, man, this is a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a close one to say. Uh, what's your thoughts, Oasis? Uh, i definitely say this is a close one as well. I give it to Rugrats regardless because, you know, Trunks and Arale equals W, typically speaking. Uh, Trunks is going to sweep, uh, not sweep, but Trunks is going to do some nice damage. If Raleigh's in, she's going to do great damage versus Mecha Frieza. I feel like uh, Raleigh is the best counter to Mecha Frieza we've seen thus far, in my opinion. Uh, sure, Cyberman's going to be in, but versus I mean, Slug. Next week, uh, Royals has a divisional two, so they'll probably have uh, Pilaf in as well to have him hey. out next week. There you go. There you go. And Slug will probably be in versus Cyberman, and that's an even matchup, in my opinion, because Slug's going to tag at, you know... <laughs> He's taking an acid and tag, yep. Mm-hmm. All right, <laughs> so, Toshiro. I'm glad to give you the Do you, Does your vote uh, surprise us for some reason? Um, uh, so part of me is going to abstain. I feel You like... can't abstain. You're the coach. <laughs> you got to inspire something right, for right. your team. Listen, bias. I really feel I I want us to win. I actually think that we can win because, granted, like if you look back at like the tag team match and everything, the finals it was actually Majin Vegeta versus Kid Trunks, and it was a really close match. So anything can go for the most part. You heard it here. Base go tanks will swipe uh, Royals. Uh, Shut up. I hate you. But like Cyberman, if Cyberman, oh, it's for me. I feel like we have we can have the advantage and everything. It really depends on if everyone actually works out well. Yeah, this will be a match of who is, has the guy that screws up. Kind of will yeah. dictate the match. And honestly, I so I want to say like my vote is going to go like Royals, <laughs> like. 
is is that close for me because I really see how Royals is very scary, and especially if they have Mecha Frieza in, and he does what he did last week, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be a scary one. It is no matter your size, Supernova is a massive hitbox. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, for their uh, a, a hard to say what the votes were, but it was mostly it, we'll go two one uh, Rugrats. Not saying who voted for Royals. So that brings it out for uh, week number two of the Capsule Cast. Um, I would like to thank everybody for supporting. Uh, we do have links to the Discord and website. And in the Discord, you can find all the stats and everything shown here. Uh, final question heading out. Uh, please leave comments asking what you guys like us to add. Uh, this week will be, who do you think will be the top damage for week number three? Uh, we will try to reveal it after we get through the teams, uh, just as we did the, with the predictions this week. Thank you again, Oasis, for keeping track. Do you guys have any final remarks? Uh, well, two things. A, Tosh, if you want to win, just boost life on it. Work for me, it'll probably work for you. Uh, <laughs> leave down in the comments your own predictions i will we would love to see what the community thinks on who would win this match or who will win these matches and of course we'll discuss them later on the next cast and just kind of reiterating what um what dora said just from a staff perspective we really do appreciate everything all the support that you have given us because none of this is really possible without the community and you guys are amazing so just thanks for everything Alrighty then, thank you again for uh, guest appearing this week, and we wish you guys a good luck and have a great week.